Good evening, I'm Dana King. And I'm Ken Bastida. A tsunami travels from Japan to California. No serious damage this time, but it's happened before with deadly results. Are we prepared for the next destructive wave? Well, Simon Perez examines that question, and Tony Russomano takes a look into how the latest wave sneaked up on everyone yesterday. Tony? Ken, a tsunami does not need to be a big wave to be dangerous. As we saw here in Santa Cruz, there may be no wave at all. Four hours after tsunami surges began damaging the Santa Cruz Harbor, the first warning reported a six-foot wave had already hit Crescent City. No official warning for this area at all. And no warning of a surge until it actually hit Crescent City. Yes, that's correct. The National Weather Service canceled a tsunami warning hours before the surge hit. Forecasters said the waves were going to be too small to cause damage, and they did not want to create panic. Instead, they warned of what they called small sea level changes. Two people watched the water in the Santa Cruz Harbor rapidly recede. They pointed to a section of concrete and a metal post. The triangle was about six inches underwater. Within 15 seconds, the surge had changed direction. Water rushed back in. Look at it shaking now. Yeah, it's back underwater now. It was just sticking up a foot and a half. At Crescent City, the surge and waves broke three docks. Damage was estimated between $300 and $700,000. In Santa Cruz, 400 miles to the south, surges continued late into the night. We've had about a half a dozen or eight boats that have broken loose from the moorings, excuse me, from the docks, and uh, some dredge pipe that was along our shoreline has broken loose, and we've resecured that. Tsunamis can come in huge waves, like the ones that hit Thailand following the Sumatra earthquake two years ago. But the same quake also produced destructive surges that inundated Sri Lanka and many other islands around the Indian Ocean. This USGS computer model shows how the shape of the ocean floor off Crescent City serves to amplify incoming tsunami waves. The waves are then trapped along the coast and can bounce back and forth for hours. The Bay Area coastline has similar features. You can see as the tsunami comes into, in this case, the Bay Area point raise here uh, in Monterey Bay, they initially hit as a fairly simple wave, but you can see they get very complicated. USGS geophysicist Eric Geis says even a tsunami with a small wave, like the one yesterday, can come with a very strong current or surge. The wave is the height of the tsunami. The surge is the power of the tsunami in the water. The wave heights dim diminish, but that current is still in the tsunami. So anything that's sitting in the water, harbors, boats, or anything in the water very near shore, uh, will feel the effects of those strong currents or surge. Arbor officials say the way the Weather Service bulletin was worded, canceling the tsunami wave warning, then mentioning small sea level changes, understated what actually happened. Simon Perez shows us how the warning system is being improved. Simon? 